Hallo en welkom bij to Gear Junkies TV. Uh, today we're going to take a look at the Moog Super Monocom. Okay, let's take a look at uh, what the Super Monocom is. Um, it has two oscillators and it has a typical Moog ladder filter. Uh, two envelopes, uh, one that, that controls the oscillators and the other one that controls the filter. Um, that said, that's about the only standard uh, synthesizer thing you will find in the Super Monocom. Because it has uh, two ideas that it tries on. And the first idea is that you can um, divide the basic uh, waveform of the oscillator by an integer number. And this integer number uh, can be controlled with two subharmonic oscillators per oscillator. Um, I think the best example is to show you how that sounds. I'll just play an uh, arpeggiated sequence here on my keyboard. And what we're hearing now is the first oscillator, the basic waveform. Um, this is a square wave and you can also set it to sawtooth. Uh, the middle uh, of this switch is, uh, in this case, the basic oscillator gives uh, a, a square wave and the two sub uh, oscillators give a salt toot. I'll leave it on here and I'll slowly uh, turn up the volume of the first sub oscillator and the second one. And now I'll just play around with the, 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 the divine factor. We can do the same with uh, oscillator 2. So I'll just uh, Turn this up slowly. And now we have a six note uh, chord playing basically. Um, all uh, derived from the two basic oscillators with two subharmonic oscillators. So let's uh, take a look on, uh, uh, let's take a listen, I mean, uh, on how the filter sounds. Very nice Moog leather filter. Um, the filter can be controlled with uh, this um, uh, envelope with, with an attack and decay, and it can be set to positive or negative. So let's try both. So if we take a look on the right side here, uh, this is where all the patch points are. Um, 
there are a lot of uh, inputs and outputs. For instance, you can uh, control the, the basic harmonic uh, frequencies of the, of the oscillators and the sub-oscillators. Uh, there are sections for filter cutoff, the, there's an envelope out, and uh, there are various sections here that ha have to do with the left side of this uh, sub-harmonicon, and that's where the sequencer is. Um, before we go there, I would like to point out that it also has MIDI. This is in the form of a mini jack, and it get, it accepts all kinds of MIDI signals, including clock and uh, and notes. So the third section of this uh, special synth is the sequencer section. Um, there are two sequencers. Each has each have uh, four note steps, and they can be controlled. Uh, by this polyrhythm section, which I will go into uh, in a minute. First, uh, let's take a look at the steps themselves. Um, if you uh, trigger one step, you can hear what the pitch is, and you can adjust it like this. Uh, you can assign the oscillator and the sub-oscillators to the steps, and now you can set A note. Okay, if we uh, press the next button, we can hear the next uh, step, and by triggering it, we can set, again set the pitch. Okay, now we have done that. Um, we can take a look here at the rhythm section. With the tempo knob, you uh, define the, the global tempo, and this can be very high. I, th I believe it can go up to uh, 700 BPM. And why is that so high? Because these polyrhythm uh, parameters, they divide the clock by, uh, again by integers, like the same as the oscillators do with the frequency. And this way you can um, have four different rhythms playing at the same time, and you can assign them to sequences. Uh, let's try it with a simple uh, sequence one controlled by rhythm one. We uh, press play and we'll see what happens when we uh, adjust the, the, the tempo here. Now we approach the original tempo that was set here. And now we divide it. by an integer number. We can do the same with rhythm 2 here and for instance assign it to sequencer 2. And now you can hear that they uh, um, run uh, independent of each other with different rhythms, but um, they are both controlled by the master tempo and with an uh, integer uh, divine factor you end up at some point where the sequences align. So there's still um, some kind of uh, correlation between the rhythms going on, and uh, by combining this with the nice sub uh, harmonics that you get here, you get very interesting and very complex uh, sequences. Let's just play around and uh, see what happens. As you can see, the Supermonicon doesn't have any uh, presets uh, that you can choose, but um, uh, Mo have found a really interesting way to deal with that. Um, they uh, give you these 
patch uh, sheets that you can use uh, to uh, to build a patch, and there are some included in the in the manual as well for yourself to uh, to make notes on. Um, let's just uh, put one of these on here and uh, dial in all the settings that uh, that are set here. Uh, this one uses uh, two cables, so I'll just uh, patch these first. Um, as we can see here. Sequencer 2 will control the uh, VCF envelope and uh, Sequencer 1 will control the VCA. I'll just press play and uh, then dial in the sequence and then dial in the uh, oscillators and uh, we can um, hear how the sound shapes out as we play along. Now we can play around with, for instance, the filter, or maybe um, add some more of the first super moment here. And we have created a nice sequencing sound. Let's try another one. do the same. Uh, we'll patch the cables first. Uh, in this case the clock uh, goes to the trigger. Um, the sequencer 2 output controls the VCO2 pulse width. And we have a third wire here. The, the sequencer 1 controls the uh, first VCO pulse width. So again let's uh, just uh, press play. Um, see what happens to the sound as we dial everything in. Now we can hear nice uh, shifts of the tone intervals of uh, both the oscillator and the sub oscillators. And we can for instance uh, add some extra decay. Let's try another one. So again, we'll uh, use the patch cords first. In this case, I can see that um, the VCF envelope out will control the VCO1 pulse width. Uh, 
and sequencer 2 will control the cutoff frequency. So let's dial in the tempo and uh, press play and see how the sound evolves. Now we can play along with some of the subharmonics as well as the basic frequencies to get some interesting harmonic connections. So what do we think of the Subharmonicon? It's a really interesting uh, little synthesizer uh, with the, the two ideas of, uh, of the dividing the, the harmonics and dividing the, the, the tempo. So you get these interesting polyrhythms controlling all these complex os uh, harmonics. Um, it's, it has a kind of a learning curve. You have to uh, play around with it and um, use the, the, the patch chords and uh, use the polyrhythms to get a feel of what it can do for you. Um, it is very uh, good at special effects, but also it's very uh, good at shaping harmonics. So for instance, if you have, um, let's say like a vocalist and you want to add some, uh, some nice harmonics uh, while, while he sings or while he talks, then the, the subharmonica can help you with that. It's uh, it's not a regular synthesizer as as we know from Moog, but uh, it's it's a daring idea and a daring concept, uh, which I'm sure that many of you will uh, find some uh, interesting purpose for. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, then give us a thumbs up, and you can also subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you next time.